All right, you ever think back to when you were a kid about some of the screwed up or embarrassing things that you took part in? You know what I'm talking about. Maybe you were the kid that peed your pants in the second grade during a spelling test. Or maybe you drop kicked your best friend off a trampoline and broke his pelvis. Whatever it is, I think it's safe to say that we all have some deep-seated childhood regrets that we all carry around with us. Like, for example, one time when I was a kid, me and my sister decided to order a pizza. And the only problem with that was, it was the middle of winter, and it was like a goddamn stage three blizzard outside. Now, what kind of asshole makes somebody deliver a pizza in this hellish nightmare? There's fucking wampas outside and shit. Who does such a thing? Well, nine-year-old me and my older sister, that's who. So after like two hours of us ordering the pizza, our doorbell goes off, and like a piece of shit, my sister sends me out to face the poor bastard to get our pizza. So I open the door, and of course, the delivery guy's this old dude all hunched over, freezing his ass off. Oh, hi there, Sonny. Sorry I took so long. I almost slid into oncoming traffic getting here, and I have arthritis in both of my cankles, so I can't move so fast. Holy hell, what a complete perfect asshole I felt like taking this guy's pizza. And to make matters worse, all my sister gave me to tip this guy was some crumpled up crusty ass dollar bill that looked like somebody blew their nose into it. So I hand it over to the guy, when all of a sudden, a fucking gust of wind rips it right out of my hand, and the thing goes tumbling off into the abyss, never to be seen again. So now this feeble old man's just staring at me, arthritic cankles and all. What the hell am I supposed to do in this situation? Well, what I should have done was got old man River out of the elements there, served him some hot cocoa, and made him my honorary grandpa. But instead, I just fucking shut the door in his face. I was like eight years old, all right? I didn't know what the hell to do in a situation like that. Uh, okay, have a good day then. I guess I'll die now. And that was it. I sat down and ate some pizza, and I never told anybody about that experience ever in my life. So now as a grown-ass man, 20 years later, I'll be laying in bed at night, and I'll just randomly start thinking of that old guy freezing his ass off. Yeah, that's gonna be a fun one to explain when I'm standing outside the pearly gates and shit. Uh, it says here that when you were nine, you attempted to murder an old man for a Little Caesars one-topping? Do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to plead the fifth on that one, Pete. But you see, that's the kind of shit that I'm talking about. Childhood regrets that you'll never live down. Now, another childhood regret of mine was when I was over at my friend Zachary's house that lived across the street. And Zachary was a weird-ass kid, but we'd always put up with him because he always had the coolest toys growing up. I mean, he had the talk boy from Home Alone, he had Furbies coming out the ass, he had the fucking robot from Rocky IV. The kid had it all, what can I say? But the thing that we were most envious of was his gigantic Pokemon card collection. And this was back in the 90s, when kids valued Pokemon cards more than life itself. Michael, if you ever touch my holographic Charizard, I'll find and murder your entire bloodline. Do you understand me? But Zachary didn't care about his Pokemon cards at all. They're all spread out in his room, all willy-nilly. They're all ripped and bent up and shit. His ass would practically tap dance all over him. He had so many of them, he didn't care. And that shit made us sick to our stomachs. I mean, it would be one thing if these were just energy and trainer cards we're talking about, but the kid had a holographic Zapdos on the middle of his floor, for Christ's sake. To us, it was like fucking animal abuse for fake animals. Somebody should have called the Fake Humane Society on his ass. So after seeing Zachary's blatant disrespect towards his holographic Zapdos, what the hell did I decide to do? Well, what I should have done was take Zachary aside and be like, Dude, I've seen a kid beat another kid over the head with a pogo stick for a fucking holographic Zapdos. Get your shit together and take care of your Pokemon cards. But instead... I fucking pocketed that holographic Zapdos. Yeah, that's right, I stole it. I'm not proud of it, but with my broken nine-year-old logic, I wasn't stealing it so much as I was rescuing it from a life of cruelty. So now after all these years later, I'm still filled with regret because I stole this kid's shiny fucking piece of cardboard. But what the hell am I supposed to do? Track down Zachary's goofy ass and be like, hey, uh, I know we're both grown-ass men now, but uh, that's a Pokemon card that I stole from you back when Bill Clinton was in office. All right then, uh, see you later. Oh, and uh, by the way, you're a cartoon on the internet, and uh, I didn't bother to change your real name. Uh, sorry about that. So if you're watching this, Zach, I just want to say sorry about the petty theft, and if you want your Zapdos back, well, I still have it, because I take care of my goddamn Pokemon cards. All right, let's do one more memory about me being a piece of shit, and we'll be done with it. Now this time, we're in my next-door neighbor Michael's front yard, and we're doing what most dirty little kids were doing in the 90s. We're playing WWF Front Yard Wrestling, that's what we're doing. And this particular matchup was between my friends David and Michael. David, of course, was Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Michael, on the other hand, was Bill Goldberg. Now, of course, we told Michael that he couldn't be a WCW character, but naturally, Michael didn't give a fuck. So there they are, fighting to the death in Michael's front yard. I'm playing the role of referee in this shitty wrestling match. And to call it wrestling to begin with was a stretch of the imagination. I mean, you got David over there, like, ripping the hair out of Michael's scalp and shit. I'm just standing there like, Doc, okay, I'll allow it. That's a completely legitimate wrestling move. Well, things start getting a little dicey when these two idiots start getting a little too close to the sidewalk. Now, what I should have done in this situation would have been like, Hey, you idiots, get back over here. Somebody's about to crack their head on the sidewalk. 
but what I did instead was not say a goddamn thing. I mean, there's a styrofoam championship belt on the line for Christ's sake. I can't interrupt the match now. Well, imagine my surprise when David pulls off a haphazard German suplex and he cracks Michael's head on the sidewalk. And I gotta say, it was loud. It's not like a fucking 30 out six going off the neighborhood. At the time, I thought Michael's brain just exploded on impact. I was almost positive people on the street were calling the cops like, Yeah, hello, police? Get the paddy wagon. I just watched a kid in a Scotty Pippen jersey get murdered in cold blood. Thankfully, to our surprise, Michael sits up and, uh, well, he's looking a little disheveled to say the least. Uh, Michael, are you all right? So now, what did me and David decide to do? Well, what we should have done was run inside and get Michael's drunk-ass stepdad and be like, Hey, uh, Mr. Michael's stepdad, we were being deeply irresponsible, and I think we might have just scrambled Michael's brains into oblivion. But instead of doing that, we just took off running down the road and left Michael to die by the street. I know, it was a shitty thing to do, but again, we were like nine years old, and we didn't want to get in trouble. Hell, we even went back and grabbed the styrofoam belt before Michael's stepdad came outside flipping out. Wow, what the hell's going on out here? Michael, fix that stupid look on your face and get your ass inside. Now, in the end, Michael was all right from that whole event. I mean, he probably had a mild concussion at least, but, uh, well, it was the 90s, so it was no big deal. What? What do you mean your head's fuzzy and you can't remember how to tie your shoes? Oh, rub some dirt in it and stop being a wuss. So, Michael, if you're watching this, I'd like to apologize on behalf of me and David. We shouldn't have left you there on the side of the street, but at the same time, I'm gonna stand by my call. It was a technical knockout and David's still the champion, so I guess you can suck it. The end. Brewstew.com